Well, things have been pretty interesting over on Twitter over the last couple of months, mostly because Elon Musk has been working to acquire the site. It's been this big back and forth uh, for a little while now, and it finally has happened where he's acquired the site and he's taken it private, which means he can now make changes pretty quickly. And he's already starting to do that around this Twitter Blue subscription service that appears to be tying in this verification checkmark in some way. And while that has been the big leading headline, there are some other aspects to this that I think are pretty interesting and, believe it or not, could actually improve the website. Maybe an unpopular opinion, but we'll go over that here today. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button. And if you're new to the Small Wave Plus channel, make sure you subscribe down below. So first of all, let's, uh, let's go over here to Elon's thread. The thing I've noticed about Elon is he's very polarizing. There's people who are just extreme like they dislike the guy or they extreme they just love the guy <laughs> it's it's one or the other and a lot of times whenever he tweets they just clash constantly in the replies for me i'm just incredibly indifferent on the guy i like some of the stuff he's attached to like uh, spacex I, I think it's really cool what the engineers there are doing and i would like to see us go to mars in my lifetime and having something like starlink that i hope one day could actually have Comcast attempt to improve due to competition because they, they basically have a monopoly in my area. So I'm kind of rooting for that as well. But then tunneling under LA to improve traffic seems kind of dumb. So it's, it's hit or miss there with those. But as for Elon himself, like I said, I'm, I'm very indifferent on a lot of this. And as for Twitter... I, I mostly use it because it's good for uh, reaching an audience and obviously putting out messages and just having some fun on the platform. I think people really, really get attached to Twitter and believe it is incredibly important to like the, the civilization and the future of humanity and stuff. Although I guess technically Elon Musk would fall into that category since he spent like 40 some odd billion dollars for the, the platform. But either way, he had what appears to be a first, really the first big change that he would be making when it comes to the revenue for the site. Twitter doesn't make money. In fact, it loses money. And now I have to assume after some of the financing that's gone into this, it's probably hemorrhaging money at this time. But we can see this from Elon Musk. says, Twitter's current lords and peasants system for who has or doesn't have a blue check mark is BS. Power to the people. Blue for $8 a month. All right. So the idea now that's being really pushed, and this is the biggest issue I have right now with the direction this entire conversation is going has to do with the little check mark next to people's names. Like if like my account has a check mark, so if I comment on this, people say you're worried about losing your check mark. I am not at all worried about losing my check mark necessarily, because I the reason most people would uh, would actually go out and apply for one is because they've run into some situation around impersonations or anything like that. I'm sure there are some that are like really attached to the thing and they're like, look how cool my username on this Twitter account looks with the check mark next to it. But for me, that's, I don't even know what the thing really does. I Other than just tell people, yes, you've come to the right account that maybe you saw on, say, YouTube. It, it makes sense to that degree because impersonate, impersonators pop up all the time on YouTube. You're probably seeing some right now down in the comments here or on other videos for this channel or the main channel where people are telling you to go to Telegram because you've won a PlayStation 5 or the new iPhone or something like that. And obviously it's a scam. Don't do that. But it being verified at least helps to have people second guess if they should get on Telegram and contact them over this uh, PlayStation 5. So it being tied into this Twitter blue account is kind of strange in the sense that it sort of takes away from its primary reason for existing. Although I guess, hey, if you sign up for Twitter blue and you verify that you are indeed real, you usually have to take a picture of your ID and all this stuff, and it, it still continues with that same process, then yeah, hey, you've been verified. You're paying $8 a month. Hey, you get the little... 32 kilobyte BNG. But if we dig a little further here, there are some pretty good features for the platform and one that I think could lead to an interesting future for Twitter. He says, you also get priority in replies, mentions search, which is essential to defeat spam or scam bots, which Twitter has a lot of them. I think they were quoting some amount 
during the back and forth for this, whatever it was, triple it. That's probably the amount that are actually on Twitter. Uh, and then the ability to post long video and audio and half as many ads. And, and this will give Twitter a revenue stream to reward content creators. So the idea of being able to treat this more as a platform similar to YouTube, where if you are posting, creating content, bringing in impressions and users and viewers, technically you could make a living off of Twitter, which again, has been an issue for the platform. It's never been able to bring in enough money to pay its own bills, let alone pay the creators that work to hold up the platform. So in that sense, I like the idea that people who post on Twitter with the uh, full engagement and all of this stuff could actually be compensated for it. Also at the bottom here, he does seem to go into at least some explanation as to what happens if say a person doesn't feel like subscribing to the service for $8 a month, but maybe there's a possibility they could be impersonated, which was my main concern around all of this. He says there'll be a secondary tag below the name for someone who is a public figure, which is already the case for politicians. So you have a little badge that you get that basically says you're paying $8 a month. And then below that, there's something else that's like, hey, this is the correct public figure that maybe you've come looking for from Instagram or YouTube or Facebook or wherever, right? That makes more sense there because I think there should be a way that you can essentially verify an account without them having to pay $8 a month. To me, the, the check mark, like I said, is more vanity. I... I was really curious what else there was to add value to this Twitter blue service. And I, I still think being able to edit tweets, uh, the video stuff, being able to be prioritized over bots and even have a revenue stream potentially built out for Twitter paints an interesting future for the platform. I will say, though, a lot of this seems to be on the fly and it's it's very sporadic and all over the place right now. So there's a lot of stuff that would have to be nailed down and figured out before I can look at this and say, okay, Twitter is going in the correct direction right now. But uh, we'll, we'll see about that. I mean, the one thing I can say is Twitter has never really been going in the right direction. It's always been just a, uh, I think a fairly a poorly run platform all the way around. Uh, it, like I said, it's more just a necessity as a way to reach people even outside of something like YouTube here. But let me know what you guys think about this down below. I'm really curious how many people are going to pay $8 for blue, especially when the big thing that seems to be getting pointed out is that check mark, not necessarily all the other features that could potentially be added now or even down the road. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.